Warning, this episode contains content that may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. We live our lives surrounded by what is man-made, often forgetting the dangers that nature provides for us all herself. Where two great masses meet, there is likely to be a rather great disaster. Plate tectonics theory says that there are plates constantly pulling and pushing in relation to one another on the outer layer of the Earth, creating massive friction at the fault lines where the plates meet. The San Andreas Fault is a prime setup for earthquakes. For decades now, scientists have claimed that California doesn't have very long until the big one hits. A quake anywhere along the San Andreas Fault could trigger more quakes, and the results would leave California in disastrous conditions. Clusters of damage would dot heavily populated metropolises, including Los Angeles, and any power, water, and transportation lines along the fault would be damaged or destroyed, altering rescue efforts and leaving firefighters without water to fend off any blazes caused by the earthquake. Sewer lines would fail for up to six months, and aftershocks could further the damage. While safety measures are starting to be put in place, California estimates that it could face $213 billion in damages, 50,000 injuries, and around 1,800 deaths in the near future, even with precaution. It's not enough to worry about the danger that lurks beneath our feet, but also the danger that can come from the sky above. A solar storm is an amalgamation of various particles, x-rays, and magnetized plasma that hurtles towards Earth, usually catalyzed by a solar flare, which produces enough energy to rival one billion hydrogen bombs. While these flares are rare, it would only take one in order to cause widespread panic all over the planet. When charged particles collide with the upper atmosphere, they will cause a global electromagnetic pulse. Satellites will fail and radio communications will be lost. But it's a coronal mass ejection or a magnetized cloud of plasma that will cause the most chaos. The plasma will produce a geomagnetic storm, overloading any power stations and altering nearly every aspect of modern technology. Exploding transformers leads to mass power outages, the internet will fail, sewage and water systems shut down, and GPS is rendered useless. It would require a global restoration and could cost over $2 trillion. An event of this size seems unlikely, but in 2012, the Earth narrowly escaped a cloud of magnetized plasma that would have sent the entire planet into darkness. And next time, we may not be so lucky. A little friction can cause a whole lot of problems. The Hayward Fault Line in California is a strike-slip fault, like the San Andreas Fault, and it's been creeping along this way for years without incident. Even though the chance of a major earthquake is about 30% in the next 30 years, banking on the remaining 70%, not exactly a good idea. The Hayward Fault Zone encompasses 5 million people, and in the worst case earthquake scenario, half of them would lose access to water, and saturated soil beneath structure and road foundations could lead to deadly landslides. The damaged roadways would complicate emergency responders' routes to hospitals, all of which would be at max capacity. Depending on the weather, massive wildfires fueled by natural methane gas could devastate the landscape even further. Power would be out for a week, and lines of communication could overload, resulting in less people getting the possible life-saving help that they need. Aftershocks could continue for weeks after the initial quake, with damages likely reaching $120 billion and the death toll at tens of thousands of lives lost. The Earth's tectonic plates are constantly moving against one another, but when they get stuck, that can have devastating results. 
At the subduction zone where two of these plates converge, the plate being forced down can become fixed in place, building tension between the two layers. When they finally give, the tension turns into massive force, a force known as a megathrust earthquake. Megathrust quakes are the most powerful type of earthquake, often reaching magnitudes of 8 or higher on a 10-point Richter scale, and the destruction they leave behind is massive. There are several of these subduction zones all over the world. However, there is one in particular that is long overdue for wreaking some good old-fashioned havoc. The Cascadia subduction zone is located just off the coast of the Pacific Northwest, along Washington, Oregon, and British Columbia, and its last slip occurred in 1700, resulting in a magnitude 9 earthquake and a tsunami all the way in Japan. Scientists now know the next megathrust quake could happen at any moment. In worst case scenario, its impacts could devastate the Pacific Northwest. Along the coastline, the quake's force will be strong enough to temporarily override gravity, catapulting buildings and people into the air, while the shaking earth will topple skyscrapers in Seattle, bridges in Portland, and buildings across the area. The power grid will fail, and communications will be lost, putting emergency responders in overwhelming circumstances. The area will be under extreme economic distress, and some predict anything west of Interstate 5 will be unsalvageable and abandoned, altering the Northwest for decades to come. Though the chance of a worst-case scenario rests at 15% in the next 50 years, should it occur, many lives will be changed forever. Earthquakes aren't the only danger lurking beneath our feet. When magma from the Earth's core rises but can't breach through the crust, pressure builds underground over centuries and conceals nature's deadliest ticking time bomb, a supervolcano. But we often associate disasters like this with the past, like the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD that destroyed the ancient city of Pompeii. But unfortunately for us, the past does tend to repeat itself, doesn't it? And the results can be catastrophic. Beneath the Yellowstone caldera in Wyoming are two enormous magma chambers that some scientists estimate could erupt in the next 80 years. An explosion from this supervolcano would devastate a vast amount of North America, in addition to the 1,000 cubic kilometers of magma, up to a foot of ashes will layer the ground, poisoning water supplies and making it difficult to breathe, and killing crops and animal habitats. Sulfur dioxide clouds will reflect sunlight away from the Earth, resulting in a 10-year volcanic winter, causing famine, loss of communication, and a halt to both air and ground transportation. Up to 90,000 people will die instantly from the eruption, and millions could die from the after effects, and the cost would devastate the economy. Scientists say they will have an adequate warning to evacuate significant numbers before an eruption, initially saving lives, but mass devastation is assured. Before you go, I have a very special offer for you. Blue Apron, a top-rated meal delivery service, has decided to sponsor this episode. Blue Apron sends delicious, farm-fresh ingredients and recipes to your door weekly so that you can not only cook an incredible meal, but also learn how to cook better to impress friends, family, and even yourself. Every meal can be prepared in 40 minutes or less and is an incredible way for you to broaden your horizons in the culinary world and eat a healthier, more balanced diet. But Blue Apron puts their money where their mouth is and is offering my fans a special gift. The first 200 of you to visit the link in the description below and try out Blue Apron's amazing service will receive three free meals. You can cancel the service or skip deliveries at any time easily through their website so there's no commitment. I've been actually using Blue Apron for quite some time and I use these recipes right here to continue to make meals that they taught me to make and uh, they've been a great help in teaching me to become a much better cook. So hurry up and head down to the link in the description below and start on your delicious journey with Blue Apron. And be sure to tweet me photos of your first meal with Blue Apron. I'd love to see. That's all for now. Don't forget to check out the last episode of Seriously Strange Caught on Camera if you feel you can handle it. And of course, subscribe to my channel now because you won't want to miss what's next. And I'll see you next Wednesday.